it going, folks? So while we're on this uh, pencil crayon kick I got going on, I realized I haven't actually talked about Prismacolors yet. Now, Prismacolors are some of the most widely praised pencil crayons. They're spoken of more often than Polychromos. They're spoken of more often than Whole Bean. They're spoken of almost as often as Crayola. So I'm gonna take my drawing pad and we're gonna play with some Prismacolors. Let's get going. All right, so we're kicking this off with a familiar sight. We're using the Strathmore 400 8x10 for some pencil crayons. I believe I've already mentioned that they are Prismacolor. I've got the 150 set sitting on the branches, ready to go. I'm actually quite glad that I have rekindled my love of pencil crayons. It's been a while and quite frankly, they've just been sitting on the shelf not doing their fair share of the work. I like to do this, I'll rotate through, I guess is the right way to say it. I'll rotate through what I actually want to use for work that week. Uh, this last six months or so, it's mostly been pastel because I was also working on getting stuff ready for a uh, art show. I'll, I'll get back to pastels, probably in a, in a week or two. Maybe next week will be pastels, who knows? Until then though, you'll just have to suffer through my colorful pencil crayon performances doing yet another portrait. If you if you like something, stick with it. It's important to build experience doing other things too, but gosh darn it, I just like drawing faces. Once again, doing the sketch in my two millimeter mechanical pencil. It's a very nice pencil, very nice lead. I quite like the, I believe it's Stadler. I've actually got some Faber-Castell lead sitting on the sideline though, waiting for this particular stick to be used up. Looking forward to that. It's actually the grade that I like, 3B. Yeah, I would actually advocate more people to go with the two millimeter lead. Um, it's easier to clean up than a wooden pencil. It is far more versatile than a mechanical pencil of 0.5 or even 0.7. Um, you can get a very fine point on it. And if you don't need a fine point, if you need some ground to cover, then you can simply use the side of it. You can extend it just as far as it'll go and it's not really at risk of snapping because it's, that's two millimeters across. That's, that's huge. Maybe not as huge as those uh, 5.6 millimeter monsters that I've been seeing. That lead is a lot more rare though. And I don't know if I'd want to limit myself to shopping for lead at one place. Oh, and the pencil crayons come out. So as you can see, I don't actually use the original packaging that these pencil crayons came in. Uh, I believe the Prismacolor comes in six trays. I can always double check. I still have the original packaging just to show off and just in case I need to, I don't know. You know what? I just like having the original packaging, so sue me. But I believe it comes in six trays that you kind of just have to like spread out across your desk and use up all sorts of room that I just don't have because I'm very, very messy. Yes indeed, just off screen there is a forest of pencil crayon shavings, pop cans, and just old glasses that I haven't returned to the kitchen yet. One of the great tragedies of a 40 hour, five day work week schedules is that sometimes cleaning just falls by the wayside. I do manage to keep the important part clean, which is exactly as much vision as my camera has. But enough about my problems, let's talk about the pencil crayons themselves. That is what you're here for. So Prismacolors are some of the smoothest pencils that I've ever used. They are creamy, they are buttery. You can actually blend pencil together without using an actual blender or alcohol. In fact, one of the greatest strengths of Prismacolors are the light colors. They are opaque enough that they'll actually show up on top of darker colors. Now, other sets like my Polychromos, the white and the light colors are a lot weaker and this is quite often hard to do. Uh, quite often I'll have to actually erase parts where I want the light colors to show up. That also constitutes a lack of planning on my part. I'm not very good at planning out what colors go where before I lay them down. However, this smoothness can also be a weakness. If you crave texture in your art, like I do, it is perhaps not the best idea to be doing it with Prismacolor. A smaller set of Polychromos might be better. Maybe some Pablo. Really, it all depends on your price point. Prismacolors are the cheaper option out of all of these extra harder pencils. 
So you might just have to learn to live with it, to be honest. Not only are they cheaper, but be depending on what stores you have in your area, they may also be the only option. If you only have a Michaels or a something to that effect, then pretty much you're just up the creek without a paddle. Another problem that I have with them, and a reason that I don't use them that often, is that quite often, because of the way their cores are constantly breaking, you really need a special sharpener with them. Now, Prismacolor happens to sell one. It's between 10 and $15. I think I got mine on sale for about seven. Uh, it has two holes in it, a regular sized hole for a regular point and a shallow point where it's kind of stubby. It looks a little, probably about halfway between what the pencils come with pre-sharpened and when you sharpen them with a the normal pencil sharpener. This really helps keep the core intact long enough to actually use it. The downside is that you'll have to sharpen it twice as frequently. Now, one of the shadier things, which is quite honestly a cost cutting measure, which is not in our best interest as consumers, is that the pencil sharpener blade for the long end is not aligned very well. So it ends up damaging um, if you're sharpening like Stadler pencils or Polychromos, any any sort of like harder leaded pencil, um, the core is going to snap a little bit and you'll be left with an ugly point. So really you're gonna want two pencil sharpeners if you're gonna use Polychromos. And I, I mean, that's not that big of a deal, but it is an inconvenience. For my second pencil sharpener, which actually is the main pencil sharpener that I use, you can actually see it on the screen. It is something called a brass bullet. Uh, the manufacturer, I believe, is Alvin. Oddly enough, the same manufacturer as my mechanical pencil, the two millimeter one. So final verdict for Prismacolors, they are better than Crayola. If they are the only open stock pencil in your area, and if you like smooth drawing rather than textured drawing, I would consider picking them up. As long as you get the sharpener to go with it so that when half of your pencils are shattered, you can actually still use them. Now, having said all that, I still really like the way that this particular drawing turned out. So maybe I'm just being a little bit nitpicky. It's, it's nice to use art supplies that are a little bit out of your wheelhouse every once in a while, just to shake things up and see if you're sticking with what you like because you actually like it, or if it's just because it's the most convenient thing because it's what you have right now. Also, just as an aside, uh, my fiance overheard me delivering lines for this and told me that my voice sounds like I'm doing an impression of Carl Sagan. So I'd like to leave you with these thoughts. In order to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. So I think that's it for now. My office is extremely warm right now. I am sweating bullets, folks. I think I'd like to just leave you all in silence as the rest of this time lapse plays, and I'll say my goodbyes now. Good night, and I'll see you all next week. All right, so there you have it. The lighting's a little bit better in this room, so you can actually see what I'm showing off this time. It's not direct light. So these are Prismacolors. Smooth, creamy, buttery, crumble at the slightest touch. Luckily though, as far as professional, semi-professional levels go, they're pretty cheap. So if you uh, lose one or two cores to the ravages of being dropped more than two inches, it's not that bad. Go and get a new one. It's pretty common too, so... Now that being said, the Prismacolor Sharpener has a reduced tip that I have found makes those shattered cores more usable. So if you're having trouble with your existing Prismacolors, you might want to consider picking one up. It's a good investment. So that's about it for me. I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and I will see you all next week. See ya!